Chase, what happened? Sometimes we do drop things in the water, so the boys are going to go for a rescue mission. Okay. Untied it? Untied it? Yep. Chase untied it. We're good to go. I see it. Okay. Let's go get it. Volleyball rescue mission? Complete! It's total failure. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Hope everyone's doing well out there. I want to welcome you to this week's video. This week's going to be a little different. We're going to do us a question and answer, a Q&A. But we want to start with a quick introduction. We've had a lot of new subscribers, which we really, really, really appreciate. Thank you. So we wanted to just formally take this time to introduce ourselves and say welcome. I am Chris. And I'm Jolene. And we do have three boys, Carter, Chase, and Caleb, um, 12, 10, and 9. Yep. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> and then, of course, the two cats, Tiger and Cheddar. Um, yeah, that's us. We are from Texas uh, is where we claim home. That's where all the boys were born. Um, that's where we consider... Um, that's home. Yeah, that's home for us. That's, mm -hmm. that's where everybody is. Um, we moved aboard the boat almost two years ago. Yep. Sold everything, bought it in Key Largo, and we've been in the Bahamas for five months? Seven months now. It's been seven They're going to kick us out at eight months. That's yeah. when they kick us out. But, um, so, Dolan's going to hit that intro. <laughs> Let's get into the first question. Before we start... I have not seen any of these questions, so I'm going to answer them first, and we're going to see uh, if our answer matches what Jolene thinks. This should be fun. Okay, so the first question comes from YouTube. It is Rick Jones. He asks, is your fridge AC or DC? Are you happy with it, and how do you power it at Anchor? So this is an easy one because it's all facts. Um, it is AC powered, which means it's plugged in just like your refrigerator at your house. It is nothing special. Some refrigerators are what they call dual voltage, where they run off the battery, which is DC, and then alternating current AC when you're plugged into shore power. Um, ours is not. We have an inverter, so it runs off of the batteries through the inverter when we're at anchor. If the generator's on, it's powered by the generator, or if we're plugged into shore power, it is plugged, it is uh, run off the power from the, uh, the land. It's what came with the boat. I think you can get a choice in it. We really do like it, actually. It's fine, yeah. uh, it seems like everybody that comes and visits us <laughs> stops and gawks over our fridge. They're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It's nothing like your fridge in a house. It's probably like the size of like a small apartment type fridge. Yeah, it's probably two thirds the size of like what I would consider a full size standard fridge in a house. Oh yeah, maybe smaller um, half. But it's it's just the, honestly, I, I think I looked it up one time and it's like the $199 cheap refrigerator yeah. that Home Depot sells and but it works it store it's amazing to me how much it stores so we can keep easily two weeks of food in it well when you're comparing to a lot of other boats out there many boats have miniature fridges or mm -hmm. chest fridges that tuck into a counter very different so to have what almost every cruiser would consider a full-size yeah. fridge <laughs> we're pretty spoiled yeah we are but thank you Rick for the question I appreciate it all right next question is from Facebook Christy Jessup thank you for watching are you ever worried about pirates or people getting on your boat? Nope. Mm -mm. Not in the Bahamas. No. Uh, we haven't traveled further south in the Caribbean, which we've heard um, can be a little rougher. The Bahamas has been very, very safe. Everyone's mm -hmm. super friendly. They understand their economy is based on tourism, so they don't want anything to bad happen, bad to happen to the tourists. Right. And so they're very cautious to watch out for one another, or for us as, as tourists. And to echo on that too, it's, what I've heard from other people is their culture. Their mm -hmm. culture is very helpful, and they're not a theft-type culture. That's just not in their nature. So No, theft does happen, and when you're in the bigger cities, right? Uh, there are parts of town, I would say, like probably around Nassau, that you don't want to be walking around a a alone at night as a tourist. Sure. Uh, we're right here in Georgetown in the Out Islands. They call them the Family Islands. I think I could walk around in this island any time of day or night, and I would feel just fine. And as far as someone boarding our boat, 
Um, that's one reason why we always choose anchorages with other people. Mm -hmm. We buddy boat. So you're always around other people, and that's not generally when theft happens. It happens when you're isolated, you're alone, um, you tell people or invite locals or people aboard your boat, or you tell them what's on your boat, mm -hmm. and then you leave for weeks at a time. So that's more when that happens, not um, yeah. not our situation. Yeah, and again, in the Bahamas, very safe. Yeah. Uh, there are other things, traveling different parts of different countries, that you make yourself more of a target, like leaving your dinghy down in the water, uh, anchoring too close to shore where someone could easily swim out. Mm -hmm. So there's different things like that that cruisers do to help protect themselves. Same thing with being around one another, mm -hmm. looking out for one another. Yeah. So um, at this point, we've never run across an instance where we've worried about yeah. piracy. So, yeah. Thank you for the question. Okay. This is also from pa Facebook. Paul Paz, I think that's how I say your last name. Um, what is your plan if you break down in the Bahamas as far as getting towed if needed? That's a very good question. Mm. Luckily, we have a boat with two engines. Yep. So in theory, I should always have at least one running engine, and we should be able to take motor wherever we need to on that. Uh, if we get towed, or if we needed to get towed, we could uh, reach out to other cruisers. Mm -hmm. We're a, they're a very friendly community. Would you agree with that? And Absolutely. we'd be probably more than very happy helpful. to help. Yeah. Same thing with locals. We've, we've, we know enough locals in the different islands now or they know somebody we could probably call and they would know somebody who knows somebody that could help mm -hmm. us out. Yep. Um, we can always, on Channel 16, hail for help. And yeah. there's probably a service out there that we're unaware of, somebody local, a salvage person. Now, that there's us. no, like, um, in the Florida, in Florida waters, there's Towboat US, Sea Tow. There's none of that here. I did hear rumor that Towboat US actually operates in the Bahamas. But Not there's so many um, rules and regulations to that and caveats and... My understanding is the Fort Lauderdale Boat U.S. Um, office will come and tow us from the Bahamas back to the mainland. Uh, but it's not included in our service. I mean, we get a discount, but it's not yeah. free. There's going to be a pretty hefty charge. And they're not allowed in a marina, so if you're yeah. so we have to be at dock, sea. Yeah, we have to... Yeah. tow it out to sea or be at anchor somewhere and they'll come get us. So it's one of those you, from what I've heard other cruisers explain, you have to know that you're on your own. Yeah. So be prepared for it. As far as us being prepared, we have every hose, every circle thing that goes on a belt, a belt every <laughs> every fluid, every like we have enough for everything that we could need twice over. Chris has provisioned parts upon parts upon parts and we have two engines so as far as anything we can control yeah we've controlled Just what we can stay on top of maintenance and again that goes back to also the buddy boating if you yes. can have other boats that are your friends with and you can help each other out as a backup backup you never want to rely on that but the more options you have the better you are so we just try and keep yeah. as many options available to us yeah hope that answers the question thank you for that Okay, and let's go to Instagram. Uh, we're going to do this one last. You don't know what that is. Okay. Okay. Um, look. Instagram, Leanne VW, how do you make money? What money? We quit our jobs and left Florida. We make no money. That's not true. We make a little bit of money. Yeah. YouTube helps us. When you guys watch the ads and stuff, that helps. Um, at the moment, you know, it's, it's not much. It's a couple hundred dollars a month. And uh, hopefully we continue to grow and grow and grow, and maybe one day that will be a source of income. But uh, at the moment, it's all savings. Mm -hmm. We pretty much just are uh, doing this on our savings. And um, now, when the money runs out, we'll have to figure something else to do. Our original plan, if you're new and just following us, was to travel around the entire Caribbean for the next two years or so. And our original plan before COVID was to make it down to Puerto Rico or the U.S. Virgin Islands so that we could, by that time, run out of money and start working again, because mm -hmm. we're US citizens. And Chris is certified in a 100 different things when it comes to tourism, and he's a great boat mechanic. So that was our original plan to make money. And since COVID and travel has become more expensive to island hop, mm -hmm. and things have happened with our boat that we need to go and outfit differently. Refit refit yeah differently than um we've decided to use our money and then go back to florida to find work yep so we'll be back in uh, florida probably sometime this summer do some work 
uh, do some refitting on the boat, and hopefully we can get right back out here yep. and continue on our journey uh, with more experience under our belt, more confidence. And more solar panels. <laughs> solar panels and more food. These kids will not more stop food. eating. Um, okay, so next question is also from Instagram. Eric Calvo, if I'm saying that right, how many feet is your boat? Let's start with that. The registered length is 47 feet because it's like 46 feet, 10 inches from bow to transom. If you add on the swim platform and the bow pulpit, which is the point that sticks out on the front, and overall length I think is about 53 feet. And he asked, were you desperate when you bought your boat? Would you have bought the same thing today? So let me start with, were we desperate to buy our boat? I would say a little because for us, we were living in and out of hotels with cash on hand ready to buy. So we couldn't wait months upon months. Yeah, because we were just chewing through our... We had sold the house. We had nowhere to live. We were chewing through our savings, right. a.k.a. our boat money, to live. Yeah. So, But I don't want to say we were desperate because we ended up switching from making offers on a sailboat to going for a trawler because that was more cost effective for us. But... Um, we were in a hurry, I guess I would say. But yeah. would you buy the same one today? Uh, I've been happy with it. Um, I think I got uh, the right price for it. So I'm good there. Um, I've, we've learned there's certain things. They say a boat is a floating compromise. Mm -hmm. And I would say that's true because if I bought a sailboat, a monohull, I would have known there were things I wouldn't have liked about it. Yep. And there would have been things that would have been nicer about it. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a catamaran. Again, there are things I would really like about it. I'm sure there's things that I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I've been very happy with this. Um, yeah. We've had to learn what conditions are good for this boat. Mm -hmm. um, the first, we've made several passings, passages or crossings, and they weren't very comfortable, and we've learned. But mm -hmm. I, I think that would have been the case with any boat, though. Yeah. Until you yeah. get out and make a crossing in the ocean uh, with your boat and have it in different conditions, you really don't know. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking to buy and you're able to go out and actually cruise on other people's boats and multiple times in different conditions... That would be ideal. Yeah. That would be the best. Yep. But um, I'm happy. Uh, I, I'm not looking to dump the boat tomorrow or, mm -hmm. or have to sell it because I don't like it. Mm -hmm. You agree? Yeah. It's been really nice. There's been a lot of features that we didn't realize we would enjoy so much. Uh, a standalone single shower. It's huge. Was not on my must-have list. It was on my list. And I, I love it. A bed that I can walk around. It's really nice. Love it. Uh, our back patio space. Yeah, the and space our, we're sitting in right now uh, is some of our favorite. Upper flybridge. Just having the extra space is huge. Oh, you know one thing we didn't realize that no other boat has is a couch. Yeah. None of these monohulls <laughs> and even the catamarans. They they're all built-in furniture with like tables and stuff. Mm -hmm. So nobody has that comfort of a couch just you can just relax. lounge in. Yeah. And uh, we've had people come over and it's just, can I just sit on your couch? They just <laughs> want to sit on a couch after a while so that's that's one thing that i would say after having that on a boat it would be hard to give up yeah so. so i hope that answers your question okay um this is also from instagram taryn walters thank you for watching and following along uh do you feel that you hear god better or different than in the city i think um you're referring to like on a boat versus in the city do you want to answer that or do you want me to go ahead I've got to think on that for a second. So, I would say different, and the reason is is because you have so much more alone time and quiet time that you would think it's a lot easier to, um, and we go through seasons where it's a lot easier to have one-on-one -on -one time with God and be in the Word, but then it also um, sometimes breeds procrastination, mm -hmm. and I think uh, boredom and loneliness and then I get just kind of more frustrated and mad because I'm made to be social and I'm made to be in community. I've had a lot and of alone time. The downtime and the boredom on a boat is unreal. That's one thing people just don't tell you is you go snorkeling for the day. Okay, well, that's two, three hours. You have 12 more hours to fill. Mm. And you go hiking a great hike for the day. And that's, I mean, in the Bahamas, I don't know if you can see this land behind us. It's like 80 feet high. It's That cool. hike takes 10 minutes. So, I don't know. So, I would say if you're intentional, yes. And we go through seasons where we are. And then there's some weeks where I'm just like, I just need community and I'm craving community. So, 
I would say different though. It's definitely different. It's not the same as in the city. In the city, you're always busy and yeah, distracted. Yeah, that's the big difference. You have more opportunity to um, be alone, mm -hmm. but what do you do with that time? And so mm -hmm. I think about everything about relationships, whether mm -hmm. it be your marriage or friends or even relationship with God, is intentional. Mm -hmm. You don't accidentally fall into a relationship. Um, you make a choice, and then you make another choice, and then another choice. And they can be good or bad. And you can make a choice to ignore God, and you can make a choice to seek Him and mm -hmm. uh, be open to listening. Mm -hmm. So that part is no different. Um, yeah. I think it comes down to it, no matter what your situation, alone on the yeah. boat or whatnot. Let me put it this way. Just because we have more time to sit... Mm -hmm. doesn't mean God's going to naturally reach in and, and speak to you more. Yeah. You still need to seek him. I would definitely say, though, there's more opportunities without distraction. And it's a lot prettier here. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's a lot prettier than in the city. It's a good question. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> this one will make you laugh. This is from Instagram also from Life Raft Fam. Um, what is your favorite thing about the Florida Keys, and why was it your small group? And why was it a small group? Who is that? Who has that? Um, Nick and Karina. Ah. Oh. <laughs> From our small group in, in us. They, uh, the, they want us back in the Florida, Florida Keys. Keys. Hey, guys. So we did love the Florida Keys, and I would say that church in our small group was my favorite part well, about the Florida it's Keys. It's the same thing we are missing in the Bahamas, which was community. Yeah. We found a community there. We were able to be together with other people, mm -hmm. and that's what it was. Uh, interestingly, though, for those of you that want to cruise, like we're cruising through the Bahamas, the Florida Keys is not cruiser friendly. It's not anti-cruiser, but it's not See, helpful I, cruiser. Yeah, I would almost disagree. I would say it's it's not helpful at all. It's it's almost a little bit anti. The only outside of Key West. So here's the thing: you 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 come through, and maybe some of Southern Florida is like this too, but in the Bahamas, you have all kinds of anchorages. You have dinghy docks where they know you're going to anchor. You're going to come in. You're going to buy groceries and stuff like that. And it's not like that in the Keys. Uh, Marco Island was actually very cruiser friendly. They mm -hmm. had a grocery store with a dinghy dock and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But in the Florida Keys, they want you to park your boat stay at a dock, marina. stay at the marina. So if you want a marina hop and you've got the money to do that, great. the Florida Keys is great. Uh, but if you're trying to stay at Anchor and or even live at Anchor, it's very difficult. Yeah. Key West is about the most friendly. Yeah. Uh, they have spots where people anchor and they do have dinghy docks. But even then, you're still paying for that service. Yeah. Uh, here in the Bahamas... It's, 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 it's so convenient because they know that that's who comes out here, yeah. especially the out islands. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, yeah, just interesting fact about the Florida Keys that we've realized mm -hmm. having done that and then done the Bahamas. Right. So thanks, guys. Hopefully we'll see you guys when we go through the Florida Keys because we'll be passing through there again sometime. Yes. Okay. So back to Instagram. I'm going to leave this person anonymous, but this is a friend of ours from church in Texas. And she wrote, okay, I'm just going to ask it. How do you have sex on the boat without rocking the boat? That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> it's not about not rocking the boat, okay? Every boat has its natural way of moving in the water, and you have to, like, get in rhythm with that boat. So sometimes it involves, you know, uh, you know, you change the direction where you're facing in the bed or He's not in the bed. He's making this up. Oh, my god. I mean, gosh. It's, you really just have to go. You don't want to get seasick in the middle of no. this. I mean, that, that so, could be really bad. It could ruin everything. No. Kill no, no, the no. mood like that. No, no, no. So, uh, to seriously kind of answer your question, we have doors and locks on all the rooms, and our children are still young, and they still go to bed before Yeah, us. I think it's the same answer. How do parents of preteens do it in their house, right? Yeah. Same thing. Secret. Yeah. So, that answers that. Okay. <laughs> I like my answer better. Okay, and then our last question also is, what is the worst cruise you have ever been on? Well, you can do this. Uh, as far as our in our, our big boat in Illuminate, the worst cruise we've ever been on was the 10-foot seas out in the Exuma Sound. The first time we came to Georgia. Um The first time, and uh, I'll put a link to the video here, or maybe it's here. Put it here. About the, um, it but right uh, here. that right was here. called... We labeled that video what? Nightmare in Paradise. Yeah. It was sell the boat, go home, something. It like was that. terrible, 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 terrible. But we, we recently had yeah, we had some. We've had two pretty rough crossings in this little um, harbor here in Georgetown. For those of you who don't know, you've got Great Exuma, which has Georgetown on it, and then the island behind us is a Stock Island. Stocking. Stocking Island. Excuse me. And what are they about a mile or mile and a half, two miles apart, yeah, something like that? Yeah. And so we have to cross from here 
to over there to go get groceries in the dinghy. And that's considered Elizabeth Harbor. Elizabeth that's Harbor. The harbor. So if all you there. Google Maps that, you'll be able to see what we're talking about. All the boats anchor out over here by Stockton Island because the wind is coming from usually over that island behind us, so you get the best protection. Okay. Uh, that's great until you have to dinghy across the harbor in the nasty conditions and provision. So uh, I think you filmed some of it the other day. Uh, back, so you? our worst one, though, was after church one Sunday, and we weren't naive. We knew the weather was going to turn bad, but we still chose to go. So we went over to uh, Georgetown in the morning, and coming back across, we Two were three and four foot seas yeah. in a dinghy. It felt like a tic-tac in the middle of the ocean, and every wave would just splash over, and our dinghy was full. There wasn't an inch of... Yeah dryness on anybody yeah. anywhere we couldn't even see because it's just salt water for salt water yeah and so we did the same thing the other day when we had the high winds it's like 30 knot winds we went to shore to spend the day with a car rental and explore we just had so, to get off the boat with all that we've been stuck on the boat for four or five days and we needed yeah. to get on land the we knew go stir crazy it would be bad coming back but we assumed we would just take the water taxi back well, the water taxi was canceled yep. because of the bad weather, so we'll show you. I have some footage of that, so we'll show you how that was coming back. But thank you so much for watching this q and I know it's a little different. And if you have any other questions, please put them in the yep, comments below. The comments. Chris reads those and answers all of those. Hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next week. Remember, enjoy the journey. During this past week, winds were 25 to 30 knots, causing three to four foot seas in the harbor. And with our fuel, oil, and groceries, we would not be able to get up on plane or go fast. Nor would I have enjoyed it at all. So we used Jamal, a local, to help shuttle me and the boys across the harbor. And Chris loaded up the dinghy and beat our high field little salty across that harbor. Even in the larger boat, we were soaked. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.